which was discussed last week. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu says this is the last day of Moshe's life. And he's writing the Shira and telling the Shira. Hazino Hashemayim Vadei Beiro. He's calling heaven and earth to be witness for the covenant between Kla Yisrael and Hashem. And they, they will bear witness, the heaven and earth, that if we observe the Torah, the rains will come and the earth will give forth its bounty. If Chas Shalom, we don't, the rains will be withheld and the earth will not give, give its bounty. Hazin HaShemayim Vadabeiro. And let the earth hear Imri Fi. So the way it's explained, when a person speaks from a distance, you have to be more attentive. You have to like bend your ear to listen. So if it's Hazina Shamayu. If it's God is speaking it, or the heaven has to hear, it's Hazino. You have to you have to be attentive. And I will speak. It's Shishmar, it's Imre Fi. But if you're on the terrestrial level, it's closer. You don't have to be that attentive because since you're within its proximity, it hears. Okay? So we're going to skip the first Rashi. Yarov Kamoto Likhi. It will rain or drip like rain, referring to the Torah. The Torah itself will flow <coughs> in a way which dripping from the heavens. Tizel katalim rosi. My word will be as gentle as dew. <coughs> we know that the Torah is referred to as likhi. <coughs> My kamati lekach tov nosate lochem. Shlomo says lekach tov a good commodity I've given you. Tizal Yarav Kamoto Lichi. The Lekach, meaning the Torah itself, will come in an abundance. Tizal Katalim Rossi. But even for those who are don't have the capacity to appreciate the Torah, it'll be as gentle as do. We'll discuss this in a moment. <coughs> Yarav Kamoto Lichi, sorry, Zuhi Haedus Shetu Idu Shani Ome Bifnechem. Torshan Satil Yisroel, the Torah which I've given to the Klausho, Shichayim Lolam, which gives life to the world, Kamoto Zeshu Chaim Lolam, as rain is life to the world, the Torah is life to the world, Kasha Yarfo Shemaim Talmotor, as when the heavens drip, with rain, which brings life identically, the Torah provides, that's the background. Yarov loshen yatif netifo means dripping. Just want to bring out something. The Gemara tells us in um, Sanhedrin, why did God create night? Lo ivri leil el legirsa. God created nighttime so people should study Torah. Because if it would be light continuously, people would always be preoccupied being productive. But nighttime, they're forced to stop. So therefore, they study. They're forced, if, if they choose, they could either go to sleep or they could study. But the reason why Hashem created the nighttime period was Lagirsa to study Torah. Now, all the produce of the spring and summer, what is it dependent upon? <coughs> it's dependent upon the winter rains. <coughs> that if it rains in the winter sufficiently, then there's bounty in the spring and summer. And if it doesn't rain in the winter, then there is no bounty. That's why the Mishnah says in Tainus, that if it doesn't start raining by a certain time, the Jews, they start fasting. Because that's an indication that there is an ominous prediction on the future that there's not going to be produce. 
So if it doesn't rain by a certain date, the Jews first, first they tell me the Chacham start fasting. Monday, Thursday, Monday. And then the populace starts fasting. And if it still doesn't rain after an extended period of time, they fast is a much more serious level of fast. The winter rains brings the bracha in the, when it, the produce, the bounty in the spring and summer. Now, when does a person study more? In the winter or in the summer? In the, in the winter. Mishnah says in Pirkei Ovos that when the days are shorter and the night is longer, one has to dedicate more time to Torah study. That's the Mishnah of Pirkei Ovos. Why? Because now that you have no excuse, that you're preoccupied, earning a livelihood, based on the principle of every Leila El Girsa, the night was created for study of Torah. So it's interesting. We find that Torah is compared to water. As it says, Yarav Kamoto Likri. The Lekach is like rain. Just as rain brings life to the world, identically Torah, which a Jew study, also brings life to the world. That is the backdrop, which means what precipitates, you know, rain is called precipitation. What precipitates the rain? The Torah precipitates the rain. That activates the rain. So therefore, if you invest the winters properly in your spirituality, which is the Torah study, then Hashem provides sufficient water to have the bounty. And if not, it doesn't happen. So over here, there's a Sepharno says something interesting. Now, the word Yarof is a very strong term. We find the word Yarov by the Egla Rufa, the decapitated calf, that if they find a corpse outside of a city and they're not sure from which city the person had come, so they measured the distance to the city, and whichever the close the proximity is closer, that city has to bring an Egla Rufa to atone that maybe the reason why it happened was because they didn't provide sufficient hospitality for that person. So it's called Egla Rufa. They take a calf, take it to a valley, and they decapitate it, break its neck. Yarav Kamatoliki. The rain will come down in a deluge. When it rains very hard, winter rains, when not to flood, that's when the produce is in abundance. So he explains, the Torah itself provides a sufficient understanding for everyone. You have people where the Torah is so overwhelmingly rich that it impacts on the people that if you want to delve into the depths of Torah, there's what to delve into, to be amazed. And even for the ordinary people, the common folk, there's what for them to take out of the Torah. So the Torah is Yarav Kamoto Likri. For those who have greater capacity, the Torah is in abundance. And they're able to see the wonders of God through the Torah itself. And even the ordinary people, the common folk, they're able to study the Torah even at a superficial level. And they also have a takeaway that they're able to see the hand of Hashem in the world. Okay, that's how the Sifarno explains it. So it's, it's interesting. You know, the, uh, the Alt of Kelm says, you know, Dovet Amel says, Hashem is Sarban Kvot Keel. Heaven speak God's glory. So when David looked at heaven, what did he see? He saw Hashem's glory. When you look at uh, a beautiful sky, what do you see? Right? You see a beautiful sunset. You see a beautiful sunrise. You see a mountain range. What are you impressed with? Do you see, quote, Kale? Do you see God's glory? David saw God's glory. The average poorest person does not see God's glory. So what determines when you see God's glory when you don't see God's glory? It depends what is your connection to Torah. If your connection is to Torah and in an ex exceptional level, wherever you turn, you see God's glory in creation. However, not, then you see it in the physical context and you're impressed with the physicality of the world, but you don't see the connection to the spirituality of the world. You don't see it. So David, who was at that special level, he says, Hashemayim Sabin Kvot Kale. Heaven speaks God's glory. The ordinary person, not Yarav Kamoto Likhi. So the Sifarno says, if you have Mikros Kedolos, Tarof, 
v'tovol b'shetiv k'motor l'meivinim will come in in a, an abundance to those who understand hamuchonim l'kabel mabui mekorak Torah chokma who are, have the capacity to receive the wellsprings of wisdom tizal katal imrosi v'nosen is gamke fi anigle mimeno and even according to the revealed Torah. <coughs> some level of understanding to the ordinary people, even if it's to a small degree, it has great value, that those who really comprehend it, they will see wonders through the Torah. Even the ordinary person, and even the ordinary people, when they study the Torah at the most super, superficial level, they'll recognize their Creator to some degree. So you, all you Jews at every level who received it, Therefore, when I call the name of Hashem, you should all give greatness to God. You know, it's interesting. Rashi wrote a commentary on Chumash. And there's something ingenious about Rashi's commentary. A five-year-old child who begins learning Chumash and Rashi eight-year-old child, he's able to understand Rashi at his level and to draw from it what he understands. You have the leading Torah sage of the generation. <clears throat> when he reads that same Rashi, he's amazed. He sees other things in Rashi. Every person who studies Rashi at whatever level he is, he has another takeaway from Rashi. There's so many layers which Rashi infused in those words it can be understood at the most superficial level, just to understand what the Torah is saying, and even a more profound level, how it connects at every level to be able to understand many other things. That was Rashi's genius, but Rashi wrote his commentary with divine inspiration, with Ruach HaKodesh, and therefore, as a result of that, if you, you, do you know what Rashi wrote in his life? Rashi lived only till his early 70s. Rashi wrote a, a commentary on Tanakh, he wrote a commentary on Shas. He wrote a number of commentaries. He wrote responsive. I mean, you understand? It was all written. It was handwritten. He had a quill and he had an ink quill and he had parchment and he wrote. How does a man write so much in, in, in a lifetime? 70 years. And without Rashi, you cannot understand the Torah. Rashi is known as the commentator par excellence. According to the Miri, the Miri is one we shown him, he refers to Rashi as Gedolei Meforshim. He is the greatest of the commentators. Nobody's greater than Rashi. The Miri writes on Rashi that every question which Tosis asks on Rashi, the only reason why Tosis asked the question, because he fully didn't understand Rashi sufficiently, that Rashi alluded to the question, and if he would have understood Rashi, with which the choice of words he chose, he would understand the question is not a question. This is the, the, the greatness of Rashi. So this is literally Yarav Kamata Lichi. The Torah itself has an abundance and unending source of knowledge for even the most profound, greatest genius who has unlimited capacity. But even for the ordinary person, there's what to take and there's what to be impressed. You now, years ago, in shuls, you know, the rabbi would say shiurim, classes, for the, what they call for the balabatim. And he had many types of classes. There was one class they used to give in shuls. These were Orthodox shuls where people, when they were a little older, they would come. Or even uh, one time people who were interested, it was in um, Agadita. It was called, it was a shir in En Yaakov. En Yaakov is a commentary in all the Agadita in Shas. And the rabbi would teach them Agadita, meaning the Medrashim with the commentary. But that was for them because to, to study anything which was at a more advanced level, was beyond the capacity. Then he gave a share for people who are greater, so-called, they had a background in learning or they had a great, greater capacity in understanding. So he would give multiple levels of classes to address whatever the capacity of that person was. 
and each person would take away what his takeaway was, and that would that would connect him to Yiddishkeit at at that certain level based on those classes that the rabbi would give. The Gemara says it tells us in Tainus that a person who studies Torah Shlo Deshmo. So, and Rashi Tosis explains Shlo Deshmo doesn't mean with an ulterior motive. It means with a sinister, negative intent, which means you're studying to show someone else what he doesn't know. It's like a person prepares for, for a, a lecture that the rabbi is going to give to show the rabbi how little he knows. If a person studies Torah with that objective, with that intent, it's Yarav Kamat Lichi. The Torah will destroy him. That Torah, as the Egla Rufa, he's decapitated with the axe. That Torah will decapitate that person, will destroy that person. But if you learn it, study it Lishma, with the proper intent, Tizal Katalim Rosi, just as do is essential and necessary for the existence of the earth. Identically, that Torah will enhance him and advance that person. That's the Gemara. If you studied Shlom Lishma, meaning with the sinister intent, that same Torah will destroy you. If you study the Torah with the proper intent, it will enhance you and enliven you and give you vibrancy and a sense of your spirituality. That's the Gemara in Tainus. Rabbi. Yes. So how do we explain Shlom Lishma, Balishma? No, it's a, that, that, it's a different Shlom Lishma. Shlom Lishma, that's speaking with an ulterior motive. I do it because I want for acknowledgement. I do it for financial reasons. That's not sinister. That's that's what Tosa, because that's Tosa's question. How could the Gemara say that that Torah will destroy you? We say metoch shloshma bolishma. That's Tosa's question. So Tosa explains the sh, which, that shloshma that the Gemara in is speaking about is not with an ulterior motive, which means for financial or acknowledgement, but rather with a sinister intent to use it as a weapon to destroy someone else. If you take the Torah and use it as a weapon, then it won't destroy the other person, it will destroy the person himself. That's a toast. It's called lekanter. Kanter means only to show what the other person doesn't know. That's why you're studying it.